BYU's quarterback position always elicits great emotion from BYU fans. Both present and future QBs are in the mix. We're talking about that today. We're also talking one-on-one with Jackson Robinson, BYU star guard. What are he and his teammates going to be up against when they face off against the West Virginia Mountaineers? Let's get to it on Locked On Cougars. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? I'm Jake Hatch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, resident BYU insider. Thank you for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Appreciate all of you who are everydayers with us right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. This is your original daily podcast focused on all things BYU sports, and we are brought to you today by our friends over at FanDuel. Make every moment more with FanDuel. New customers join today and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started today. All right, let's dive right in on today's show and BYU's quarterback position in 2024 this fall and obviously on into the future is one of great interest to BYU fans. Anybody who's been a BYU fan for any any significant period of time, and if you're just a college football or football fan in general, you know how important the quarterback position is. And BYU's history with quarterbacks obviously is rich. It's storied. It's got a ton of legacy to it. And the big question mark right now for BYU is, who's going to be BYU starting quarterback in 2024? Now, we're not talking about that today. I want to instead focus a little bit more on potential future options for BYU. And those came uh, by by way of two guys who visited BYU recently as part of their junior day festivities last week and uh, two 2025 prospects at quarterback, as well as a late offer uh, to a 2024 class prospect as well. That would be this recruiting class. So let's start off with a 2024 class offer, and that went out to uh, a young man from Olathe, Kansas, and that is Dylan Dunn. Now, his last name may not sound familiar to you guys, but he's got connections to BYU. His grandfather, if I recall correctly, uh, may have played at BYU. His his dad was a star quarterback at Rick's College, then Rick's College. Now, you know it as BYU, Idaho. Uh, he was a star. There was an NJCAA All-American in the junior college ranks, but when he was coming out of Rick's, BYU was kind of stocked up on talent uh, reading up on this, and he he ultimately opted to go to Kansas State. So uh, Dylan has grown up there in the greater Kansas City area. Olathe, Kansas is just a, a, a suburb of Kansas City. Uh, but this is a kid, folks, that has put up all kinds of monster. I mean, monster statistics during his high school career. They list him on a 24-7 sports at 6'4", 190 pounds. I've seen other places where he's, where he's listed at 6'3", uh, 190. But regardless, uh, this past season alone, this, this past season in high school, he threw for 3,777 yards, a school record. He also uh, tallied 47 touchdowns as compared to just five interceptions with a 74% completion percentage. Those are I, I mean, eye-popping numbers. Now, uh, obviously, this is a young man that uh, you would expect with those type of numbers is probably getting more recruiting interest. He's not, frankly. Uh, Dylan uh, said, uh, after some conversations with Coach Roderick, speaking of Aaron Roderick, this comes from Twitter, I am humbled to receive another D1 offer from Brigham Young University. Grateful for the opportunity and go Cougs. Now, Here's the situation at hand. In talking with some people around the football program, this is not a scholarship offer for Dylan Dunn at this current time. Could that change? Absolutely. BYU can find themselves with an extra scholarship and ultimately offer it to this young man. But I think with how the room is shaped up for BYU right now, with how many guys are currently slated to play quarterback for the Cougars, I just don't see this becoming a scholarship offer at BYU. Could uh, some of his other offers potentially become that? Sure. He just uh, announced, uh, I'm recording this on Thursday, he announced earlier uh, today, Thursday, that he got an offer from Arkansas State. Is that a scholarship offer? He worded it the exact same as he did his BYU offer. So I would imagine that's another preferred walk on offer. And he's also reported offers from Oklahoma State and Kansas State who are a little closer to home. So I think this is a situation where BYU is trying to pick up on a kid who's got connections to BYU. Uh, as So far as I'm aware that he is a member of the LDS faith, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So obviously that would be a draw for him uh, to Provo. But these numbers that he put up in high school, you cannot ignore those, even if he may not be the most uh, 
uh, I don't know, athletically gifted quarterback that you probably uh, want because there's a reason why he's only getting preferred walk-on offers, but his career in high school, 9,148 yards was the second in high, Kansas high school football history. He also led the state of Kansas for three consecutive years in passing and tallied 98 total touchdowns. So he's got production, folks. He's absolutely got production. And if he ultimately decides that BYU is where he wants to be, you could do a lot worse than adding a kid of this caliber as a walk-on. Because once again, walk-ons, they don't count against your scholarship limit. They're not guaranteed for any uh, period of time. Uh, if you get a preferred walk-on offer for a college, it's essentially a one-year agreement. You get the opportunity to be with a program for that singular year. And if it uh, continues on, they feel like you're worth uh, keeping around, they keep you around. In this day and age for BYU scholarship-wise, they've got to be actually be very careful because when you offer a scholarship uh, and a kid signs that national letter of intent, uh, according to Big 12 bylaws, they are locked in for the four years unless they decide to leave uh, via the transfer portal. So that's there's there's some interesting machinations here going on, but I think this is a pretty savvy offer for BYU as a walk-on in the 2024 class. But obviously beyond 2024, what does the future look like? Well, BYU had two quarterbacks in recently uh, for junior day. They were on an unofficial visits is junior days are not officially or excuse me, are not official visits where the school pays for it. These young men have to make the uh, arrangements themselves and come to the school and uh, to participate in the festivities. But Milliken High School is down in Southern California. J.P. Mialovsky uh, recently visited BYU. He has got offers from the likes of Ole Miss, Cal, Cincinnati, Indiana, uh, and San Jose State. So he's got a lot of interest from the Power 4 and G5 level. Uh, but this is a kid that, uh, reading up on him a little bit and watching his film, he's got a really, really nice throwing motion. That's the thing about this is it's an interesting situation uh, to see what J.P. Mialovsky is going to do here because he's a kid from Southern California. Like I said, he's already got P4 offers uh, it, to, under his belt. And the thing about this is... Is he a guy that BYU can pluck out of Southern California and be a part of the future for BYU at quarterback? I, I'm talking about these guys, essentially, and I, I probably should back up for a minute. So let's back up just for a second. I am fully expecting BYU to have some attrition after spring camp. And what I mean by that is, is having multiple, and, I, and I'm saying multiple in a plural sense, multiple guys I would expect will hit the transfer portal or otherwise move on from BYU football from that quarterback room. There's just way too many guys in that room right now. Too many guys, frankly, that have been around the program for far too long without really uh, contributing on the field. And uh, honestly, the quarterback position may be the toughest position uh, to uh, get on the field at because really only one guy plays. And if he is, quote unquote, the guy for a football program, you're rarely going to see other guys get an opportunity. But just with how many bodies are stacked up there right now, I fully expect after spring ball to see guys leave the BYU football program, thereby allowing guys like potentially a J.P. Mielowski. And the other kid I want to talk about is Grady Adamson, who is from Oklahoma. He's from uh, Deer Creek High School in Oklahoma, six foot two, a uh, dual threat quarterback. Both of these guys, by the way, speaking of Mialovsky and Adamson, have got a uh, dual threat capability. Adamson is the more true dual threat guy. He had over 500 yards this past year for his high school football program. And I watch both of these guys, and Mialovsky's got more interest uh, at the at the in the recruiting uh, sphere right now because he got those offers, as I mentioned, from four uh, Power Four programs. Whereas Grady Adamson has got offers uh, from some different universities not as much attention for BYU. And I'll be honest, I look at this and I'm seeing very much a, um, how do I say this? A, uh, uh, template or a, I don't know how to, uh, what you, man, I'm the word is uh, right on the tip of my tongue. I just can't get it to formulate in my mouth, but regardless, it's essentially, they, they have the, the, the look of what their quarterbacks they want to have going forward are. And Grady Adamson and JP Mialovsky fit that bill. They are not necessarily the biggest quarterbacks, but they are fleet of foot with the, still the ability to attack downfield with a nice deep ball. Both of these young men, if you watch the film of Grady Adamson and or JP Mialovsky, Lofsky. They very much flash the ability to throw the deep ball, but it's not just that they're they're chucking it every down. They actually show a much more refined ability in terms of uh, route concepts, going through progressions and the like. And I think that's something that Aaron Roderick and Matt Mitchell, the kind of the brain trust for BYU's quarterbacks, they value. They value guys who are athletic first off. They want guys who are a true dual threat because then they learn their lesson from the Keaton Slovis experiment. Uh, but they want dual threat quarterbacks, but they want dual threat quarterbacks who are capable of uh, hanging in the pocket there 
and using their eyes and going through the progressions before bailing out of the pocket. They want guys more in the mold of Jaron Hall and Zach Wilson, where they are athletic. They are a dual threat quarterback, but they are going to make every effort to make a play from the pocket with their arm before ultimately deciding to scramble. They also do offer the opportunity for you to run, use the QB run game in the offense, which is a really big facet of what Aaron Roderick's been trying to do. But uh, these are names to keep an eye on, folks, moving down the road here. Do any of these guys end up going to BYU? Any of the three I've mentioned, Dylan Dunn, J.P. Mielowski, and Grady Adamson? TBD, because ultimately they have to make the decision of where they're going to continue their football careers. But I look at all three of these guys, and I'm seeing kind of an archetype of what I think BYU needs to pursue as at the quarterback position, what they are pursuing, and hopefully what the future looks like for this quarterback position as well. And it very much is. The future for BYU is a dual-threat quarterback. And uh, kind of going back to the conversation real quick on Dylan Dunn, where he is more of a pocket passer type. Who He's not unathletic. I watched his tape. He's not necessarily the most uh, unathletic, not the most athletic guy, but he is far from being a statue back there. But I BYU absolutely, I think, learned their lesson from, from the Keaton Slovis experiment saying, you know what? We need to have the QB run ability in our offense and it's got to be part of it. It's just got to be part of the calculus here. And I think all three of these young men are capable of doing that and we'll see how things progress here. But uh, they will not be the last guys to receive offers from BYU at quarterback. I would expect we'll continue to talk about this in the run-up. Uh, like I mentioned, the last two I just mentioned, Grady Adamson and J.P. Mielowski, they're a full year away uh, from National Signing Day. Dylan Dunn, uh, he'll be a guy that won't sign next Wednesday National Signing Day, but uh, he could be enrolled in school as soon as this fall. So it's an interesting situation, uh, obviously, to track all of this, but it very much looks like BYU, they have identified what they want in their quarterback position, and they are going to hunt high and low across the country. They've gone to California uh, for one guy of the three we've talked to, one guy in Oklahoma, and another kid in Kansas City. They are going to scour the entire country. The width and breadth of the United States of America is truly BYU's recruiting ground now. And I can assure you that Aaron Roderick and Matt Mitchell, along with the rest of BYU's coaching staff, they are unafraid of going nationwide now to find the right guys. And I actually can really, really appreciate that. All right, coming up here in just a minute, we're going to flip over and talk some basketball. BYU men's basketball, they are headed to West Virginia. Yeah, Morgantown, Country Roads, Take Me Home, that whole thing. Uh, what do they expect when they go up against West Virginia? Well, Jackson Robinson talks with me one-on-one -on -one about his play this season going up against West Virginia and a little bit more uh, than that. We talked a little bit about his future prospects. Got a whole lot to go on on today's show as we continue on right here on Locked on Cougars. Today's show is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. Of course, if uh, you are like me, it's Super Bowl time. And, of, of course, happy Super Bowl week to you all. It's the unofficial start. I'll just say it right now. It's been going for two weeks now. But the best part is uh, they want to celebrate with you over with our friends at FanDuel, America's number one sports book. If you're like me, Super Bowl Sunday is about uh, plotting out the best spot on the couch, sitting down, getting some of the grub uh, from, the from the spread you've got for Super Bowl Sunday, and then watching the game. I am a guy, I'm there for the game. I'm not there for the commercials, no offense, but the best part is, is the food, family, and the football element to me is exactly what I want when it comes to the Super Bowl. But also, you can add the fun element of betting on the game as well and add to the excitement. That's the best part about it. If you want to bet on uh, Taylor Swift's appearances on TV, uh, maybe if she gets proposed to after the game, any type of prop bet you want with Taylor Swift or anything with regards to just the game itself, it's all available to you guys from our friends over at FanDuel. They have many ways for you guys to end the season with a W or two or three. And the best part is you not only bet on who will win Super Bowl 58 between this 49ers and the Kansas City Chiefs. Once again, 49ers are going to win it. That's just me. But FanDuel is also bets for how many uh, players will score a touchdown, which players will score those touchdowns, how many points will be scored, and many, many more. The best part is right now, new customers join today and get $200 in bonus bets when your first bet of $5 or more wins. That's uh, $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Simple as that. So join today, FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started today. Make every moment more with our friends at FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL.
Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Locked On is for launch the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. I would encourage you guys to check it out. It's called Locked On Sports Today. It's here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel right now. All right, BYU basketball. They are headed to West Virginia. Country roads, take me home. Uh, They're hoping to not hear that song, unlike BYU football because they, as far as I'm aware, I might be wrong about this, but I'm fairly certain that West Virginia, the only time they actually play uh, Country Roads and sing it, uh, their famous song with John Denver, uh, is when they win games. And they did that obviously crushing BYU in football and they were uh, celebrating the high heavens there at Milan Puskar Stadium. Well, BYU uh, basketball is now making their trip to Morgantown and hoping to have a better result than BYU football did. Now, West Virginia is an interesting team, folks. They are 8-13 and 13 on the season. They're currently 10th in the Big 12. But let me reassure you, and I don't maybe I don't reassure you. I can just assure you that BYU is going up against a very, very good team. This was a West Virginia team that's dealt with numerous injuries, guys not being eligible due to transfer portal, whatever hoopla, and really that affected kind of the early run of the season for them. But since they have essentially gotten their guys back into the lineup, they have been on a pretty good run here. They have beaten the likes of Texas. They have beaten Kansas. They have beaten Cincinnati, who BYU you lost to they have had some very very impressive wins now they also have dropped some they lost at ucf they lost at oklahoma state but as mark pope said yesterday during media availability uh the thing about West Virginia is their splits road to home are night and day different. I think he said that they are plus 30 in free throw attempts at home. So if you're one who likes to track free throw disparity in this game, get ready for it. It appears it's going to be one-sided if uh, history holds true uh, for BYU being at a disadvantage against West Virginia. They also pointed out that their shooting numbers, I think it was 11 percentage points different uh, for them uh, shooting on the road from three versus at home. This is going to be a tough game for BYU. You also factor in the travel element to this and uh, you have to go across two time zones. Now BYU's already done that. They've gone to UCF and won that game. So they have experience making this travel, but it's still not an easy thing to do. Two time zones. A lot of people will tell you, we'll just mess with your body clock and We'll see how the Cougars handle it. Uh, it'll be a four o'clock uh, tip and looking forward to this one. It's on big 12 now on ESPN plus it's streaming and it's a big opportunity for BYU. They've had this entire week off to get their bodies right, to get the schoolwork in order. It's their one uh, midweek buy of the big 12 season. So uh, the big question mark is how will they respond? Will they be out of sync a little bit? Having not played earlier on in the week, that's TBD. And the other concern is, is that I, we had a conversation with Pope uh, Mark Pope yesterday during media availability ability and said that Ali Khalif has been unavailable this week. Now he did uh, mention both injury and sickness have been going around this basketball team and that leaves Ali Khalifa's status very much up in the air. Uh, here, here's the thing. He's been dealing with that knee injury. Did he have a, maybe a, a little bit of setback where he needed to take some time off of that? Or as Mark Pope pointed out, is he sick? I'm leaning more towards the latter that he may just be ill and BYU is trying to get him as healthy as possible and told him to stay away from the team. We don't want you transmitting anything else to any other teammates and really hurting the lineup by uh, knocking multiple guys out. And if he's cleared and he's able to make the trip, uh, expect him to play because if he can make the trip cross country and cramped quarters inside of an airplane, uh, I would imagine he'll be available to play. But that's very much something to wor- that's worth monitoring in the lead up to this game. Another guy who I think will have a big role to play in this game is Jackson Rock. Robinson. I had a great chat with him yesterday at BYU, uh, the Marriott Center Annex there. We had a great chat about uh, what he is doing to improve himself is where we started this conversation and then ultimately kind of transformed into how the Big 12 season is treating him and obviously some conversation about West Virginia. So without further ado, here you go. Here's my conversation one-on-one with Jackson Robinson. In terms of what you've done to develop your game, what was the biggest thing you, th- you feel like you've improved on this year? Um... I'd probably say just my work ethic. Okay. Um, and also, I think Coach Pope talks about it a lot to to people, but just building a relationship with my guys. Okay. Um, I think that's a big area that I need to not necessarily improve on, but make a bigger effort in just mm-hmm. as far as trying to connect more on the court. And I think it's paid off huge for us as a team. Um, and I think it, it shows. Um, I don't think there's anybody one specific player that's just the best player on our team. I think everybody kind of contributes in their own way, and you see it night in, night out, somebody different um, on the stat sheet. 
and also things that don't show up on the stat sheet are, are really huge and um, people just don't necessarily always pay attention to it but we as a group um, definitely notice those things so one of those intangibles I guess is probably the easiest way to say right. it how did you guys go about doing that was that something that like, you felt like you needed to do individually was it some feedback you got like what caused you to go about that um, I think it just started with Coach Pope just kind of okay. explaining to me what I needed to do just to improve not only myself but for the team okay um, and just kind of taking the steps from there now you obviously have played a pretty big role on this team. You started the year as a sixth man. You moved into the starting lineup. Do you have a preference of which position you play? Do you care? Uh, not really, to be honest. It's all the same to me. Um, it's just <laughs> You're a hooping, of, right? Right. It's just a matter of playing that first four minutes or not. But mm -hmm. like I said, it doesn't make a difference to me. It's all just basketball. Where does your love of basketball come from? Um, huge basketball family. Okay. Um, grandfather, grandma, grandpa. Um, aunt, mom, all types of different people, cousins, stuff like that. Um, so just kind of being around basketball my entire life mm -hmm. has been really important and it's just drew me to it and I've always just been a part of it. Does it help that you're 6'7 and got a 7'1 wingspan? <laughs> of course, that always helps, yeah. <laughs> now how, how do you feel Big 12 play's gone so far? Uh, I think it's been good. Um, it's a lot of up and, ups and downs, but Obviously, you can tell that everybody's having those mm -hmm. those stretches this this far in the season. Um, I know that it's like the margins are really close here in Big 12 play right now. So it obviously shows how talented this conference is and um, just how tough it is to get a win night in, night out. Have you been surprised with how many like of these quote unquote upsets are going on seemingly every other night? Um, to be honest, not really. Okay. Because I know what we signed up for, and <laughs> I'm sure everybody does. So. Uh, definitely, it is crazy to see, but I can't say I'm surprised. Do you, do you like that, though, the fact that, like, hey, literally anybody in this league can get up and get somebody every night? Uh, yeah, I think so, um, just because it's just fun playing against the best competition. Mm -hmm. um, you never know what's going to happen, and like you said, it can be an upset any night. So um, just playing in these tough, crazy environments and being able to compete and uh, show off your talents is super exciting. How big was that win over Texas for you guys? Uh, it was huge. It was huge, uh, especially going into this week. We got two really big games mm -hmm. that uh, we really need to win and um, come out with a victory. So um, just taking that step forward and going inch by inch. Was it weird to have a midweek bye? Um, I was wouldn't it, say weird. Was it, it was nice? nice. Okay, okay. It was nice yeah. for sure, just having, <laughs> having that week off and then going straight into Saturday. Um, but, yeah. Did they change anything? Because like, I, I know I, in all my experience with basketball, it's very much a rhythm. Like you get into a rhythm of a season, and when you have it disrupted at times, it can kind of throw guys off. Have the coaches tried to change anything this week to keep you guys in that rhythm? Uh, not really. Um, just making sure that we're taking care of our bodies, mm -hmm. um, getting in the weight room, lifting with our strength coach wins, putting up shots, uh, just keeping the same routine. Mm -hmm. um, regardless of if we have a game or not, just making sure everything's the same. and We stay locked in. Um, we know that bye weeks don't come often mm -hmm. so just making sure that we're taking advantage of it in the best way we can how do you how do you feel as you approach the midway point of big 12 play physically uh for me or for the for, team? for you individually um i mean obviously my body's tired mm -hmm. um i'm sure everybody's feeling the same way though so mm -hmm. it's no excuse um just making sure that i'm getting in here taking care of my body and doing things i need to do to make sure i'm feeling the best i can while competing against these teams. Now you're headed to West Virginia on Saturday and they were a team that got out of the gates a little bit slow, but they've got essentially everybody back now and they're playing much better basketball. What do you see from them? Uh, they played a really good game last night, went neck to neck with a really good Cincinnati team. Mm -hmm. So um, just making sure that we go in knowing that they're really juiced when they play at home, mm -hmm. uh, making sure that we're locked in and following the game plan and hopefully coming out with a win. Do you, do you like the fact that like, that Cincinnati game, for example, you, you already played Cincinnati, so you know what level of play they're playing at. You can look at West Virginia and say, okay, if they can hang and beat those guys, they're, they're going to be pretty formidable. Right. Um, you know, West Virginia is at the bottom half of Big 12, but, I mean, they're a really good basketball team, and everybody knows it. it's definitely not uh, a cakewalk going in there or playing them at all. So we got to make sure that we're, we're, you know, playing on attack, making sure we're staying aggressive and, just figuring out a way to win. Does travel, travel at all like affect you at all? Like I know it's two, two times. This is the furthest trip you'll make during the during the basketball season. Like does that affect you at all in your experience? 
Uh, I don't think so. Okay. I don't think it makes a difference. It's just, you just go out there and play ball. Exactly. There you have it, Jackson Robinson. And there's more of that conversation to come. Uh, BYU will be at, back on the road early next week. Tuesday, they're at Oklahoma. A big, big game. Well, where does Jackson Robinson from? Oh, yes. Ada, Oklahoma. Yeah, a stone's throw away figuratively from Norman, Oklahoma, where BYU will be playing. We'll have a part two of our conversation, my conversation with Jackson Robinson coming up on our Monday or Tuesday edition of the podcast. Uh, currently leaning towards uh, playing it on Monday, but we talk a lot about him growing up in Oklahoma, his family connections there, and what he expects when BYU takes on the Sooners. So uh, stay tuned for that on our Monday edition of the podcast. Coming up next, I uh, will round out this edition of the show with a look ahead to the weekend in other other BYU sports, as well as a prediction for BYU and West Virginia in hoops. We'll get to all that as we roll on right here on Locked On Cougars. Today's show is brought to you by our friends over at Utah Community Credit Union. They're the Learn and Earn feature is the part of the UCC mobile banking app, paying your entire family to learn about money. We all want to be smarter when it comes to our finances and what is better than learning about money while also making some money as well. That's the best part about Learn and Earn. It breaks down financial topics into fun, bite-sized educational games like quizzes and trivia. And every time a family member completes a topic, they earn points that accrue and can be redeemed for gift cards to many different retailers like Amazon, Apple, Sephora, Walmart, Nike, and many, many more. There's age-appropriate content for every member of the family. Y'all can compete against one another head-to-head and track your progress on leaderboards as well. The best part is Learn and Earn is available inside the UCCU mobile banking app, so you can play it literally anytime, anywhere. And of course, the more you play, the more you learn. And the more you learn, the more you earn. Learn and Earn, part of UCCU's award-winning Be Money Smart Youth Banking program, helping kids, teens, and parents have fun with becoming more financially literate together. It's all courtesy of your friends over at UCCU. Love where you bank. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. I put out a call yesterday for those of you. Uh, my birthday is coming up in just a few days' time, and I'm going to be a little bit selfish. So if, you, uh, if you'll bear with me for a moment, I've had a dream for a long time of launching a college football podcast. And the, the name of it is the RPO Pod. I've soft-launched it. Uh, three or four times in the five years I've owned the 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 graphics and the 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 I guess the rights to it. I don't know that doesn't sound quite right. I have a goal to get it launched, but let's put it this way: Mrs. Hatch already thinks I work way too much, and I frankly I work a lot. But nonetheless, I want to have this be a part of my uh, of my I guess radio and my podcasting repertoire. And the way to do that is to get the channel monetized. Now we have already got a bunch of uh, subscribers who uh, heard the call yesterday. And the goal is to get it to a thousand subscribers where it's a monetized YouTube channel. And from day one, when I finally get it going, it can start making money, which I think will entice Mrs. Hatch to sign off on this. And if she's watching this, she's probably going to berate me, but nonetheless, bear with me for a moment. So my birthday wish is for those of you to go out and subscribe to the RPO uh, podcast. It's on on YouTube, I will uh, drop a link in the show notes. I will also, uh, there's going to be a little bit of a card here for watching this on YouTube. You kind of like right up here where I'm pointing. Uh, if you want to click that right now, I'll do it in post product. Here's the magic of, of podcasting on YouTube. Click it, subscribe to the show. And if we can build that out to a thousand uh, subscribers, and we almost got 5,000 subscribers on this podcast alone. So literally one in five of you, if every one in five of you, I would hope that more than that, if all five in five of you would go and subscribe to it. But if you'll do that, just uh, celebrate, uh, do it, uh, do it as a solid for your, for your, for your guy, Jake, uh, celebrate his birthday and make him happy. I would appreciate you guys doing that. We had a very, very strong start. I thought uh, yesterday uh, with my request for that, I'm just going to throw it out one more time. Uh, on this podcast. I'll probably keep doing it from time to time. Uh, kind of my my goal to get it started randomly is April 1. So we got about two months uh, lead up here to get that to 1,000 subscribers. I kind of want to do some off-season content and then roll in to the college football season. It would essentially be a short-form podcast, even shorter than this podcast. I'm talking... 10, maybe 15 minutes every single day, hitting maybe the two or three biggest stories in college football and getting out. That, that essentially a, a daily digest of college football uh, from my perspective. I, I'm a big football fan in general, and uh, I've kind of bloviated on way too long about this. But if you wouldn't mind doing that and supporting the show, I uh, really, really would appreciate all the support. All right, a couple of notes for you guys before we go on today's show. A uh, tough loss earlier this week for BYU women's basketball. They fell at Fog Allen Fieldhouse to Kansas, 67 to 50. Kaylee Wolston uh, had three career highs, including her career high in points in 20, with 26 of uh, BYU's 53 points. That's pretty significant stuff. 
in the loss uh, for BYU. So congratulations to her on that showing. But BYU looked to bounce back as they are going to be welcoming the number 23 West Virginia Mountaineers to Provo, Utah. While the men's team is playing out in uh, Morgantown, while the uh, Mountaineers, uh, the women's side uh, from West Virginia, are going to be in Provo, the 23rd ranked Mountaineers, taking on uh, BYU at the exact same time as the men's team, 4 o'clock Mountain Time. I know it's 6 o'clock Eastern, but it's 4 o'clock Mountain Time tip-off for both of those games. Both of them on Big 12 now on ESPN+. Plus. If you've got a way to uh, do dual screen with your ESPN Plus subscription, uh, you can watch both of those games side-to-side. Side. We'll see how the uh, Lady Cougars uh, do in that one. Also so want to say congratulations earlier this week to Zach Jones from the BYU Men's Golf Program. He won the NIT at Omni Tucson National Golf Club with rounds of 65, 69, and a final round 64, ending the two-day 54-hole tournament at 18 under par. He led BYU to a fourth-place finish as a team uh, in the in the tournament. So really, really good stuff to see a guy like a Zach Jones kick off the spring season with a phenomenal showing. That's incredible incredible final round 64 in the final round i wish i could golf nearly as well as that but BYU finished fourth as a team with a total of 42 under par uh finished 822 new mexico took home the team title new mexico of all teams but nonetheless the lobos win at arizona arizona state were close behind in second and third respectively and then byu right there in the mix that is a promising a very promising start to the spring season for byu men's golf this is a men's golf team by the way folks that is loaded i mean loaded with talent and only more talent coming in in uh, via the upcoming recruiting classes. Uh, do not be surprised to see BYU men's golf uh, shoot some really, really low scores this spring. And the nice part is Zach Jones got it started, and who knows what next week might be. Uh, was it uh, uh, Keanu Aquinas really, really uh, been coming on strong? So uh, we'll see what happens with BYU men's golf. And then the final notes for you on today's show I've got for you guys. You got a couple of things to keep track of this weekend. Uh, actually, more than a few. But you got BYU women's gymnastics with their first home meet of the season at the Marriott Center. They're hosting West Virginia. Wow, it's a West Virginia week. Weekend uh, for BYU sports. I just put that together literally a uh, second. I just keep saying West Virginia, but that'll be at seven o'clock tonight, uh, Friday night at the Marriott Center. If you want to get out and watch it, it's also going to be broadcast live on Big 12 now on ESPN. Plus, uh, you have BYU women's tennis at Utah State today. That'll be this morning at 11 a.m. If you're listening to this early enough, also, men's tennis is uh, taking on Montana State tomorrow. At 11 a.m. Already mentioned men's and women's basketball. Four o'clock tip off for both of them against West Virginia in both circumstances. And then, uh, uh, then the last thing, looking ahead early next week, women's golf is at the FAU Paradise Invitational uh, down in Boca Raton, Florida, to kick off their spring season. Best of luck to them early next week. Uh, notice I did not say men's volleyball. They actually have a bye this weekend. They will be resuming action next week after they had a really, really. Uh, busy stretch was it six matches in like eight days or whatever that was uh wrapping up earlier this week or not like excuse me last week so uh we'll see how BYU men's volleyball bounces back after a couple of tough losses to UC Irvine but I uh, wanted to get you guys up to speed on where you can find BYU uh teams in action this weekend and then the final thing I got for you guys on today's show is my prediction for BYU and West Virginia now this is an interesting game because as I said West Virginia has really really come on strong of late having gotten all of their quote-unquote big guys guys and what I mean literally big guys like their their size on the interior but more importantly their most talented players are available now this is not going to be an easy game for BYU but I've got confidence that BYU can take what they did against Texas and translate that to the road they can take confidence from having uh, played at Texas Tech and have that monster first half you got to learn how to finish and this is a great spot for BYU to go and get a road win West Virginia is beatable they have proven that they're up and down game in and game out yes they've beaten Kansas they also lost to UCF so this is not a, a team that is imminently unbeatable, but it's also a team that BYU definitely, I mean, definitely cannot take lightly. The Big 12, it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world out there in the Big 12, but I think BYU gets the job done. I've got a feeling that they will handle their business. I can see a score like BYU getting like 71 and winning at 71 to like 66, something like that, where they just, they they get the W and they come back home 500. And I, they will actually, I don't think they're coming back home. I forgot to ask about that. Are they going to be traveling straight to Oklahoma because they play on Tuesday? Tuesday, I would assume that's probably the case. We kind of a hard pressed to fly back Saturday and then get on another plane Monday and go to Oklahoma, but that could be how they'd handle it. But regardless, the biggest uh, point is the BYU would be back to 500 in conference play and still very much uh, a, a player 
in the Big 12 race. And that's that's the positive as they approach the midway point of the Big 12 season. All right, there you go. That's what I got for you guys on today's show. Uh, once again, thank you for all the support. Truthfully, you guys uh, mean the world to me. If you've not signed up for our subtext, subtext community, please do so. That's also linked in the show notes. It's a great way to interact with the show. You can send me text messages directly from your phone. I can do vice versa and update you guys in live time on the show. Um, I'm out of practices, all that type of stuff. So anything you guys want to hear about, I'd love to hear your feedback. And obviously you can do that via social media, email, or once again, via our subtext group as well. But until next time, my friends, we'll do a postcast after this uh, West Virginia game goes final on Saturday evening. So stay tuned for that. But uh, if not, we'll see you guys back here on Monday talking all things BYU sports. Once again, thank you for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Appreciate all of you for being everydayers with us right here on the Locked On Cougars podcast.